Hi, I'm Amber, and welcome to the Lone Star Keto Podcast. Today, we have a special guest with us, Justin Gieber, Giebler, sorry, right. <laughs> and he is a fellow MeetRx coach, and he will give the rest of his background because it's quite fascinating. So welcome, Justin. Hello. Hi. Yes. Yeah, so uh, it's better if you just call me Justin, the all out life dot carnivore. That's what I am on Instagram. A lot easier to find me there. I don't really, uh, you know, use the whole first and last name thing for everything, although people do. And that's totally great. Good. Good for you. Um, so, yeah. Where do I start my background? So I do a podcast with the Meat Mosaic, which is uh, me. Tom Clark, Emily, uh, Raymond Nazan, which I know a lot of people in the community know, and uh, Joe Zumbo. I don't like my last name thrown out there, but I'm fine with throwing their last names out there, obviously. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, what happened is we all met on, on Meet Our Ex, actually, and Emily used to host the uh, mid-afternoon meetings, and Tom hosted the, the late night meetings. And I, I was one of the first people to go on to the late night meeting, the like 6.30 p.m. or whatever it is. And I, and I met Tom. Turns out we only lived like 20 miles from each other. It's like, what? What are the chances, you know? So we started hanging out. He was already doing videos on YouTube. Uh, so we kind of became Meet Mosaic and, and we do our own little podcasts and, and uh, YouTube and things like that. And it's a lot of fun. We, we love talking about this stuff and going over many different issues. So that's one hat. Of course, the other hat is the carnivore coaching, the Meet RX coaching, and uh, some off-brand coaching that I do as well. With that, I am also a uh, program coordinator for a medical uh, insurance company. So I do that as well. That's my day job. So I have a nine to five, you know, and then um, I do some uh, interning uh, as I work my way to becoming a licensed clinic or licensed marriage and family therapist, practicing clinical counselor. Yeah, it's like a dual license thing That's awesome. that I'm working on. So yeah, a lot of different interests. Um, I play a little music on the side as well. I kind of get myself involved in anything and everything, you know. Nice. Oh, tell us a little bit about your health journey too. Like why carnivore? I mean, how did you get involved with that to begin with? Was something going on in your life? Did you just, what the heck one day decide to try it? Well, um, I wish it was that simple. Um, so I grew up sick. I was a sick kid and not just in the head like I am now. I was legitimately sick, like missing, uh, you know, days from school and things like that. I mean, from what I can remember as early as, I mean, four or five, um, having to take that que that pink colored amoxicillin that tastes like bubble gum. Mm -hmm. And it probably tastes like bubble gum because it's full of sugar. And, you know, I remember being so little that I had to have it in like a little special syringe or something like that, you know, not just a regular spoon. So I must have been really, really young. And I, I think it was like throat infections all the time. I would get those. Um, I almost died once because my mom cleaned the house with Tylex and I guess my lungs collapsed or they um, they completely closed up. So I had to be rushed to the emergency room. Um, I was born with jaundice, which I don't know is really that bad of a condition, but it's like off, right? It has a name and everything. Um, and so antibiotics are a big part of my life. I mean, kind of fast forward, um, you know, into puberty, um, like sinus infections like every three to six months, a gnarly sinus infection. And I mean, I was like Slimer. I would sneeze and the snot was like world record green <laughs> and world record long. I remember this one time, you know, I'm in middle school, right? And I'm trying to talk to this girl and I'm holding a Dr. Pepper and I sneeze and like, I just shoot snot into my Dr. Pepper. Oh. And the girl just kind of like screams and runs away. And I'm like, yeah, not great, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, so it, it just, you know, even that just, you know, all the socially, social stigma of being the sick kid, you know, people not knowing if I'm gonna, it's hard to keep friends because of them not knowing when I was gonna be in school the next day. Cause I kept mm -hmm. having to take like a week off here, two weeks there, you know, and I <clears throat> ended up with gastritis in high school. I got mono somehow, even though the poor dating life, like I was out for two <laughs> weeks, you know, I, I just seemed to get everything, every little cold. Um, my stepfather believed I must've had some kind of autoimmune disorder, you know, just because, and I had specialists, I mean, I was going to urgent care so often that the doctors knew me, the nurses knew me, 
you know, mm-hmm. oh, Justin, you're coming in to pick up your amoxicillin. And I, and I, it was so much that I would walk in and as soon as I walked in, I'd tell the doctors, I have a sinus infection, give me amoxicillin 500 milligrams uh, for at least two to three mm-hmm. weeks. And then some doctors would be like, oh, well, we're not sure, we can't prescribe that. And then they'd be like, okay, here, we'll give you a week of amoxicillin. And I'd take it for a week and I'd end up with a non sinus infection within two weeks and I'd be back, right? Because they didn't listen to me because I'd been there a hundred different times. Um, I, even, I even have my sinus cavities excavated. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing in here. I had sinus surgery because my sinus infections were so bad and I begged them for the surgery. They swore up and down that after the surgery, I would no longer have any issues with sinus infections. Within six weeks of getting the surgery, I had another sinus infection. Oh, and they were like, and they were like, okay, well, I guess you're just one of those people that we're gonna have to cycle on and off antibiotics every six weeks. Oh. And by then I had already known how damaging to the gut antibiotics are because I'd already started doing my own research and reading books about health and things like that. And I was like, no, I'm done. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm done with you guys. You guys have had 20, like nearly 20 years to get this straight and I've done nothing but get worse <laughs> basically. Mm. Um, on top of that, I, I, uh, had, uh, chronic migraines. Now this started at age 20, right? Which for a young male starting out in the world, you know, right after high school, essentially getting these severe chronic migraines were just, I mean, they, they were life destroying. I, I remember vividly the first day I had one because I was supposed to start a first day of work at this Halloween shop and I was pretty excited about it. But the entire <laughs> night before, my head just wouldn't stop hurting. Like it was just like crazy, completely insane. I went to urgent care, they gave me like Tylenol 3. I downed the entire bottle and like passed out basically (laughs) for the day. Now I knew what it was because I already had two sisters that have migraines. So my sister gave me some of her medication that made it go away. Ended up seeing a neurologist and I got put on Maxalt, you know, and um, a a preventative medication. But uh, the Maxalt, I mean, you're only allowed nine tablets of migraine medication a month because it is both addictive and extremely harmful to the brain and body and gut Mm. and everything. Um, And I had to take my migraine medication when I was first diagnosed every other day, because I was legitimately Mm. getting migraines every day, if not every other day. And the sick thing about migraines and the typical migraine medication is that, so on the directions, you're supposed to take it as soon as the migraine hits or as soon as you, you feel the weirdness and the tingling or the pain and things like that. So, but because you're only allowed nine a month, you, you want to preserve those, right? So what you end up doing is the opposite and taking them only when you absolutely have to and you're like trying to drive and you're blind and you can't see Mm -hmm. and your head is hurting, you know? And and so it's very, it's very counterintuitive uh, the way that they do it. And, you know, it's, and it just shows how toxic the medication is. So Mm -hmm. I did talk to a neurologist and she says, um, if you keep taking this medication the way that you are, you're going to end up with seizures by age 40, like 43 or something like that. It's like, that's worse. (laughs) That's worse Mm -hmm. than migraines having, you know, like grand mal seizures, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And that's only for taking it like a couple of decades from the, you know, I was 20 when I had this conversation. So she uh, ends up putting me on like a more migraine diet, you know, avoid nuts, avoid tomatoes, you know, it was okay. Um, It seemed to kind of help. I did research on vitamins. So I did like a bunch of magnesium and I was doing fish oil, um, coenzyme Q10, all this different stuff supposed to help and um, and some, some butter burr and all this kind of stuff. Basically anything that claimed that it helped migraines, I would go out, buy and take basically. Um, Now I was also somewhat lucky enough to also 
uh, get a natural path. So I worked with the natural path and I've had the full allergy, you know, blood test done that basically came back. You're allergic to pretty much all the food. And I was like, really now? <laughs> like you couldn't tell, tell me that, but she, she put me on kind of like a, a quasi gaps diet. You know, it was like the paleo essentially, you know, um, no dairy, uh, no gluten, but everything else that I didn't show, you know, that I overreacted to, I was able to have. So of course, what do you do? You go and get gluten-free almond muffins, right? And cupcakes, right? Because at the time I was uh, in a relationship uh, and, and she was vegan, you know, so she was doing the whole vegan thing, which mean, which meant I had to do the whole uh -huh. vegan thing, right? <laughs> And, and so, you know, I, I did the whole plant-based thing. I mean, I remember my, my breakfast being those uh, Oregon shakes or uh, Garden of Eden shakes with a gluten-free waffle and an apple and thinking that, yeah, I'm really rocking it. Oh, I got to mm. take my migraine medication because oh. my head hurts, <laughs> you know? Um, so I, I've done all that kind of craziness. I watched, you know, fat, sick and nearly dead. So I did the whole juice fasting as well. I bought the $300 juicer, you know, and was doing my kale with the spinach, with the chard, with an apple, with Manuka honey, with cacao, oh. with, you know, oh. <laughs> all of that. And like this big juice, right? And like, I'd have it like every single morning you know, and, and, you know, make sure you eat the pulp or whatever, because you want to get the fiber and just all, all kinds of madness. Right. Um, and that, that continued for uh, quite a, I did that for six years. Yeah. That was, for, and it kind of helped um, in that. Now at the same time, I was still, you know, having the occasional Carl's Jr. Double Western bacon cheeseburger from time to time. Like I did, I never went fully plant-based, maybe like a week here and there, but I loved my meat and eating vegan. I was always hungry. Like I couldn't keep it up. I just didn't have the willpower that, you know, my ex did at the time uh, to, to keep up the veganism. Although she was constantly chugging supplements and stuff like that. But I suppose that could be podcast number two. Anyway, <laughs> we're talking about me. Um, and so I kept that up, kept, you know, I have spending like $120 a month on vitamins too, just to keep myself functional. And when I say functional, I mean, to where I could, where I was having a migraine about once a week, you know, which is, which is functional when you're a chronic migraine sufferer, but non-functional compared to everyone else. And I was still dealing with the sinus infections and I developed um, carpal tunnel syndrome. And I was probably also getting a little bit of fibromyalgia symptoms as well in my body because I was just get random aches and pains and things like that. Um, yeah, it was a mess. And my gut, I mean, my gut never really hurt. However, at age 14 or 15, I did have a bout of gastritis that was really bad. And I also believe, you know, before carnivore, I was probably also developing ulcers as well. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing about the migraine medication that reminds me is that it got to a point where it would hurt my stomach. It was like a cross between indigestion and heartburn. I don't know how to describe it anymore, but it felt like my intestines were inflamed. Mm. So I don't know, it's like IBS maybe, that's how they feel. And um, I, would, I would chug Pepto-Bismol and that would help um, or some aloe vera juice and that would help. Um, the doctors gave me, I think, like an antacid, but it didn't really help. And, you know, I would, I would ask the, the pharmacist, I would ask my doctors about it, and they had no answer for me. Like, it, and, and the pain was so bad that it, it literally felt like the migraine moved from the right side of my head down into my gut. <laughs> so it was the same level of pain. It just was somewhere else now. <laughs> And it was a little easier to deal with gut pain than head pain, but I was still like, this is still not a good thing. This is, you know, th this is still so far away, excuse me, from healthy <laughs> and I'm still barely functional. Like, how am I supposed to keep this up for the rest of my life? You know, 60 years, whatever, 50 years. And fast forward again, so I, I, I live life that way. I get through my bachelor's, I start a master's program, I'm, I'm able to work. 
at least for the most part and keep a job and, and all that stuff. Um, and then I get into, oh, and, and interning as, as a therapist and then get to uh, March of 2019 and uh, I am in a severe car wreck. Um, mm -hmm. Basically on one of the, I was living in California at the time. I'm on one of the freeways, you know, quick stop, I stop and then the car behind me doesn't stop so they ran into me and I ran into a truck and I'm in a 2010 Toyota Corolla and I basically had a Ford Explorer in my backseat, you know? Mm. Um, so the car was totaled, I was totaled, you know, and the migraines just shot up to their original level, you know? And I was like, mm. I, I'm, I'm not functional again. You know, it was twofold. Hurt my back, my neck from a car wreck and migraines, you know? Um, so I, I turn to the internet, right. As many of us do. And I look up, okay, migraine treatments again. I was like, maybe stuff has changed since the last time I did some research, you know? And, uh, I found the work of uh, Angela Stanton, um, and her, uh, migraine protocol, you know, her book, uh, fighting the migraine epidemic, highly recommend it's super sciencey. Basically what she discovered is that migraines are a sodium channel dysfunction. Um, essentially the migraine brain, as she coined the term, uh, absorbs sodium very, very quickly. Uh, we burn mm -hmm. through sodium. Um, and because of that, you get to a point where, so sodium is necessary for the neurons to jump, right? Uh, for the co co connection in the brain so you can think and function and all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? So basically without the sodium, they get stuck. And when they get stuck, it causes a cascading effect, which eventually leads to the you know, inflamed blood vessel in the brain. Cause it's like, I wanna function, but I can't because I don't have sodium to burn to function, basically. Um, so I, I'm, a, I'm a high salt carnivore for sure. And she has a whole protocol, which I, I won't get into here, but uh, anyone with migraines, uh, some people call her a quack. Um, do I agree with everything she says? No, but I mean, I think she's right on about most of it, you know, and now I know that there's other people that have tried um, the uh, migraine miracle book, which I know is a high fat keto approach. And supposedly he's helped a lot of people with migraines as well. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why keto and carnivore may work is twofold. At least this is my thought about it. Um, is one, carbohydrates do interrupt the sodium channels. So carbohydrates do uh, make your electrolytes, especially sodium, unbalanced. So if you intake sodium and then take carbs, you're actually losing sodium because of the process of having to process the carbohydrates and it's not able to get and use the sodium. Um, that's the one reason I think it works. The other reason is all the fats because of all the fats that the brain needs to function. And the state of ketosis, as we all know, is a lot easier uh, for the brain to use to function the, um, the ketones rather than you know, the glucose, right? So I think those are the reasons why those methods work uh, for migraines. Um, but I think the carnivore method is, is superior, obviously. Um, I never really dabbled into keto. I think I did keto for like two weeks and I couldn't hit macros. So it was like, so it was in the Angela Staten book group on Facebook. And I kept seeing people talk about ZC and CD. You know what I mean? I was like, well, okay, what is ZC and CD? What are they talking about? We, everyone, you're laughing because you know exactly what it is, right? <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's zero carb or carnivore diet. And I was like, oh, I know what that is because obviously being in the therapy field, I know who Jordan Peterson is, right? And so I heard about the carnivore diet like a year before actually trying it, you know, because when you're dealing with migraines or a chronic condition and you're somewhat functional, the, the thing you don't want to do is mess up that level of functioning, right? So I, I was just too scared to try it in the beginning. And, and maybe it would have been a difficult, more difficult time without finding Angela's work. But I don't know. It, you can never tell, right? Um, so I was like, wait, carnivore, can I do that? You know what I mean? Like asking for permission, like a child or something like that. And... <laughs> 
they were like, oh yeah, sure. So then um, I started out really silly, like having steak with uh, zucchini and like yellow squash, because those are like the lowest carbohydrate um, foods. And then with like mushrooms, because I liked mushrooms and like everyone's up and down about fun fungus, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then what happened is I just found myself just cooking the steaks and my, <laughs> my squash and my zucchini and my mushrooms went bad. And after that, I just didn't buy them anymore. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll just eat the steaks. Yeah, yeah exactly. N no big loss. So that's how I started. Um, my transition period was really difficult. I loved almonds. I would go and buy the uh, organic um what's it called when sprouted organic sprouted almonds that are like $13 a pound. You know what I mean? And, and the last thing I gave up uh, was almonds because um, I ate, like I was watching a, a movie or something on Netflix and I ate like three fourths pound of almonds. And the next day my stomach hurt so bad. Mm. And I was like, okay, that's it. The almonds gotta go. They can't. <laughs> and you know, I used to eat pistachios too. You know what I mean? It's just, and I'm, and I'm telling, I'm, I'm telling these little stories just because um, for most of us, it isn't just you wake up and you're just full carnivore and you're just off and running. You know, you keep some of that stuff. Oh, pistachios are, are low carbohydrate. You know, you just look for low carbohydrate stuff. And <laughs> before you start to learn about the anti-nutrients and really get deep into the science about it. Um, so, you know, if I was going to go see a movie with friends and, and I knew I couldn't order popcorn, you know, I would carry around bags of pistachios to go eat while, while watching a movie. So um, it's just little things like that that are OK if you need that little bit while you're transitioning, you know, for those first six mm -hmm. months or, or whatever it is, you know. Um, because you're giving up, you know, all those, all the other, especially like the carbohydrates and the grains, you know, I, I figure nuts versus, you know, corn, you know, grain, bread and stuff like that. Take the nuts, you know, hundred mm, percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's just all those little things. My, my transition though was, I mean, it was really difficult, but I think it was twofold because of migraines and because of recovering from a car accident. You know, mm. so not only was I changing my diet, my body was literally trying to <laughs> rebuild itself too. Um, so I remember having what felt like a migraine for a month, my first month straight. Um, and another thing too about the Angela Stanton protocol is that uh, you swear off medications because medications are just going to set you back. They're just going to further mm. um, make it more difficult for your body to absorb nutrients and minerals that the body desperately needs. So you swear off the, the trips, uh, the triptans for the migraine. So, you know, and I, I, I had already sworn off Excedrin, Tylenol, all that, because I, I remember at one point, um, I was taking so much Excedrin that Excedrin started and ibuprofen started upsetting my stomach. You know, because like I said, you only get nine pills of the migraine medication. So when I felt possible, I'd grab, you know, an ibuprofen 800, or I would grab, you know, three Excedrin or, you know, four Tylenol or something like that. Those really playing a dangerous game with medications. Um, and then of course, go out and party and have a beer. You know what I mean? <laughs> like for real, I mean, I've, I've put this machine, this body through so much torture, like most people like just, just wouldn't believe, but both consciously and unconsciously stuff I was trying to do stuff. I wasn't trying to do. Um, but, um, so, you know, I just suffered with the headache and, you know, people are like, how, how did you deal with that? It's like, I was at the end of my rope. I really, really was because if this didn't work, I'd already done the whole vegan thing, been paleo, saw a natural path, done the, uh, allergy tests, um, natural doc, you know, uh, typical doctors had my sinuses taken out. I'm like, what's next lobotomy? Well, I just, I'm running out of things to, to give here, you know? Um, and, and people are always like, well, how did you keep going? And with the carnivore, what it was, so the headaches didn't last, it didn't, um, they took, they took a while to, to get better. What I noticed started to change was two things. And it was energy and emotion. So 
I was probably clinically depressed at the age of 10. And I was actually hospitalized for a suicide attempt at age 16. You know, mm-hmm. so I, I'd done a hospital stint before for, for mental illness. You know, if you go back through my Kaiser records, my mental health stuff is like a stack <laughs> of mm-hmm. different diagnoses, you know, generalized anxiety, major depressive disorder with psych, psychotic features, um, you know, all, all this kind of stuff, ADHD. Um, Mm. pretty much. And I'd, I'd taken psychotropics as well. I'd been on antidepressants, you know, um, and, and different medications, trazodone, you know, to sleep and oh, different stuff as well. Um, so that's a whole nother thing, all the different medications I went on and off of as well. Um, but for the first time I could see light, you know, um, mm. the way I've described it is, you know, how, there's a diamond, but it's covered in all that carbon, right? So it's completely black, but there's a diamond under there. Um, I felt that carbon or that darkness slowly kind of erase away. Like, like imagine a dirty window and someone took like a rag and just went over like one little spot. Like it was that gradual, but like, it was like, whoa, I feel that I feel good about myself and it would last for like an hour and then it would go away and I just feel bad again, you know, Mm. or I'd have like a little more energy for like two hours and then I'd go back to kind of baseline. It was like, that's different. What is that? You know, that, that was just, it felt weird because I never felt that before my entire life. And I'm 30, you know, at this point. Um, And so it was that and just it kept expanding so first it was you know a couple hours you know a week then a couple hours a day then half a day out of the week and then a whole and i remember when i got to a whole day of feeling good you know and this was roughly like three months in you know where i was like i have energy you know my back kind of hurts my neck and you know i'm going to physical therapy and all that stuff for you know the car accident um And, but just the energy and the emotions and the mental clarity is what kept me going with it. Now I was still getting migraines that were pretty bad, but what was interesting is that like my head would hurt, but I had energy and I didn't feel depressed. (laughs) So it's like, I can deal with pain as long as I have energy to do things and I'm not depressed. I could take that bargain. I'll, I can roll with that. I can live my life mm. with that, you know? And then another interesting thing I noticed is that, so normally migraines are centered on in one side of the brain and I'm not quite sure if it's understood why particularly one side or the other, but mine was always here. Like 99.7% of the time I'd get a migraine like right here and in my neck and stuff like that, right? But what's interesting is that I don't know, within the first month and a half of carnivore, they started getting over here. You know, like it's it moved, but it was like more of a duller pain. You know, it's like, again, it, it's that thing of, well, that's interesting. That's different. That's never happened before. It did not happen on paleo. Not happened when I was doing like the low histamines and stuff like that. You know, all the other stuff I tried, you know, vegan, I never got that. Um, and so... It, it, it was really interesting. And like the way I interpreted it was that, okay, anything that's different is my body moving in a positive direction, you know? Um, and that's actually a lesson that I try to move on to or, or bestow upon my clients when I'm coaching them. You know what I mean? It's like every little difference is your body moving into a healing state. Now it might have to go through some more inflammation somewhere else or do something weird, or you might be extra tired and you might have to take a two hour nap every day for your first couple months. Just listen to your body because it's telling you, this is what I need to heal. And any movement, something that's different. Oh, my left leg, my, my left knee used to really, really, really bother me. But now that doesn't bother me so much, but now my right leg's kind of starting to bother me. I'm like, good. (laughs) That is a good thing. Let's roll with this for a while. Trust me. You know what I mean? Um, and, and so it was just those things that kept me going, you know, and, you know, now we can really do large spans of time, I suppose, but like, you know, so three months in, 
Um, I'm, I'm, I remember I had a really, really bad migraine the night before and I went to go see the Joker movie in the morning. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, when you, see that's, I started doing funny things like that where it's like, I'm in pain, but I feel like I slept. I'm not depressed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so let's go see a movie, which any migraine doctor, anyone would tell you that that's like the absolute worst thing you could go and do is go watch a movie because, you know, it's light and dark and you have the, yeah, exactly. Flashing and all that stuff. Right. So what's interesting, I went into the theater in pain and came out of the theater out of pain. You know what I mean? <laughs> which is complete opposite of what people would expect if you ever told a doctor about it right because everyone's always like oh you have a migraine put like a hot heat compass or a cold compress and a um sit in the dark room and cry you know basically mm -hmm. um but i was i was doing the opposite and so what that taught me and i felt like i had to do that and that was important because to me it's more important to know that, okay, I'm in pain, but it's going to subside versus the idea that I'm just never going to be in pain again, you know? Um, and that was a true relief was that, okay, if I have a migraine, I either need sleep, salt, or beef. And as long as I get all three of those things, it's going <laughs> to go away and I'll be solid and I'll be good in, you know, a half day or something like that. Um, and, and so it was things like that. So another time I, I had a migraine and, and my buddy was like, Hey, you want to go work out? And I'm like, I have a migraine, but you know what? I want to get in a workout. <laughs> so I'd literally go to the gym with a migraine, you know, I'm in pain, but you know, was I at maximal? Was I like, you know, totally killing at the gym? No, you know, I took it a little more easily, but by the end of the gym and into the next morning, I was fine. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be good because when you struggle with chronic illness and maybe you or some of the other people in the audience will relate to this, you're scared that even if you found something that works, it's going to be taken away from you that like, it's going to stop working, you know? So for the first year to year and a half, I had it in the back of my mind. Okay, it's awesome now. This is a honeymoon phase. You've had a couple months from time to time where you felt good, but you realize that at some point this train's gonna stop and you're gonna be back in pain again. I had that, that thought process in the back of my mind. And, but I just kept rolling with it. It was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy this. I'm gonna make this in the best year of my life. You know, so I went to Mount Shasta, I traveled to Seattle. I went to San Francisco, you know, because I was too sick. I mean, I still did these things, but to do these things and, and not be sick, you know, either coming back with a sinus infection or going with a sinus infection or, or being able to enjoy, you know, three days out of a two week vacation because of migraines or something like that, just not fun, you know. So I, I made it, you know, my first year of carnivore, I, I tried to do as many different things as possible, which is good for two reasons. One, the migraines getting better and that the whole world was about to shut down in, you know, <laughs> 10 months. <laughs> Right. So, so what yeah. luck, right? Um, so um, I forgot why that was relevant, but basically <laughs> just enjoying, you know, life in the moment, being in the moment in your good days, you know, and, and that, and look, I call myself migraine free and I know I use the migraine free tag. Now, the reason why I feel like I'm not lying is because I haven't needed migraine medication since July 5th of 2019. That's the last time I took a Suma trip in. Mm -hmm. And it was because I was traveling. I went to see my sister on her, uh, for her birthday. And, um, you know, my diet was probably a little off because I was eating, you know, whatever out there in San Francisco, you know, stuff <laughs> cooked in, you know, coconut oil, because everyone's vegan over there, you know, at least it wasn't the seed oils, right? These coconut oils a little bit better. And anyway, um, so I did get a pretty gnarly one. And probably the reason why I took the medication is in the morning, I believe I was supposed to go have breakfast with my other sister. And, you know, you, you make those, those, those sacrifices or, or, you know, those choices. They're just regular human things, right? Um, 
so but you know i'm i'm migraine free in in comparison now i do get them on occasion um about maybe once a month or so you know but i know my triggers now um if I have coffee a couple of days later, I'm going to be in, in a bad shape. I think because it's a, it's a diuretic. And I think because of the anti-nutrients and the oxalates and, and things like that. Um, but, you know, I'll still have the occasional coffee and be like, okay, two days later, it's going to suck, but I'll be okay after that, you know, um, or I'll have like a, like a beer, you know, from a friend, they'll be like, oh, this beer's so good. And I'll drink a beer. And I'm like, okay, I know two days later, <laughs> I'm going to get a migraine and it's going to suck. Or, you know, if I just totally exert myself because a certain cousin of mine needs to be moved from one apartment to another, and it's three stories down and three stories up with a couch that feels like it weighs 300 pounds. Anyway, things like that, <laughs> then I know, you know, in a couple of days, you know, I'm going to be in some pain, but I know I'll get through it. But as long as I, you know, watch my stress, stay on the beef salt water. Now, when I say beef salt water, um, I do do pork. I do do, I, I do eggs on and off. I still haven't quite figured that out. But I did recently figure out that dairy or milk specifically is a no-go for me. Um, I, I notice I get like really weird red bumps on my arms, you know, and this was happening like a few months ago because I was chugging milk like, every day, just as an experiment for like a month. And I just kept breaking out in these weird red, they weren't zits, I don't know what they were, but now that I've stopped drinking the milk, they've gone away, <laughs> you know, and, and I feel a little better. And I feel like my body composition is a little better as well. So anyway, so no milk for me, maybe I'll do the whole raw milk thing or do it sparingly, whatever. Um, but as long as I do beef, salt, water, get good sleep and um, watch my stress level. I mean, I'm, I'm here rocking and look, I'm here on the podcast and I get it. This isn't like rock climbing. We're not lifting heavy things, but we have to focus. We have to pay attention. There's lights, you know, this is not <laughs> a pro migraine environment, right? This is not a dark room. It's not calm. I'm kind of moving around things like that. And this would have been nigh impossible six years ago, five years ago, four years mm -hmm. ago. There's no, I mean, I've always wanted to, you know, do something online, you know, talk to people. I love helping people. You know, I love telling stories and hearing people's stories and reacting and troubleshooting and problem solving. I love all that stuff, but you can't come into that, come into your full self if you're suffering from that high level of pain and mm -hmm. yeah, you may not be in pain today, but there's no guarantee that you won't be in pain tomorrow. It's just, it's no way to live. It, or it's a very, very difficult way to live. It's how do you plan? You know, how do you move forward? Um, and so I take these opportunities, A, because I love to talk, obviously, I talk way too much, but <laughs> because I'm grateful. Like I'm, I'm so grateful for an opportunity like this to tell my story and, and to be here. And just the fact that, hey, I worked today. You know, I had errands to do before, you know, coming on here. You know, I, I got other things done, <laughs> you know, in, in the day. And I don't take days off from work, not because I'm some workaholic, although I feel like it because when you weren't able to work well for, the, for a long time, when you get a full-time job, it, it's such a blessing like work is a true blessing like i'm so happy excuse me especially in these times but to just go into work and not take days off not not get ill you know and an interesting thing about the carnivore community and maybe your audience is one of those things where maybe your audience can relate and maybe you can relate but when you're that ill you feel like you're the most ill person on the planet that no one else can ever relate to you because of how sick you are. Yeah, they see you're sick. People know what it's like to get a cold or maybe a flu or the occasional headache, but people do not on average understand the struggle of chronic severe illness that drags for years and years, day in and day with out. No hope, no hope. <clears throat> With, with nearly no hope to no hope, exactly. And, I, and unfortunately, more and more people are joining that category. I wish it was moving in the other yeah. direction. 
but that's what we do, right? That's why we do this. Um, but now I, I kind of get a little grin when, you know, I, I, I work remotely, right? And so um, <clears throat> I'm, I call myself quarter management. So I get told when people call in sick or this, that, the other. Um, and I kind of grin whenever someone calls out sick because I'm like, it's not me. I'm so happy it's not me. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad for them and I tell them about the carnivore diet, but it's not me. I'm not calling out <laughs> sick. Other people, no, like for real, I didn't know. I, I knew intellectually that other people got sick, but it was like a foreign concept. It was like, oh, well, they're sick and either I'm going to catch it. So I'm going to be sicker than them because I'm going to get a sinus infection. I don't get just a regular cold. Every cold, every flu turned into a sinus infection um, and a migraine. So yay. Um, but now it's like, I'm healthy and other people get sick. Wow. It's like mind blowing, <laughs> you know, and I don't right. want other people to get sick. And, and it's like, Hey, whenever, you know, I tell them whenever you want to get better, let me know. I can show you, you know, <laughs> the way or whatever. Um, but yeah, like I'm happy to see when other people are sick in kind of a messed up way, just because I'm, That's I'm kind healthy. of messed up there, Justin. <laughs> it's a little mess. I told you I was sick in the head still. Body's doing better. The mental health, yeah, stuff still needs some work. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just silly things like that. But to me, it's all about being grateful. I'm grateful that I'm clocking in and I'm able to put in my eight hours, nine hours, work on Saturday. Why not? Because I'm just totally not bugged. It keeps me away from the coffee and having to help my cousin move, which I feel like, <laughs> and I earn money. It's absolute win. Um, win. <laughs> I have a question for you, yeah. Justin. Okay. I've talked enough. I think it's time for questions. All right. Now questions. <laughs> okay. So you, you obviously are an advocate for carnivore. Yes. Absolutely. You've yes. reaped the benefits like yes. I have. Right. But there are those out there who kind of have this thought that carnivore is like, you know, this unicorn that's, you know, leaping over rainbows and it's going to cure everything and the world is going to have peace again kind of thing. And I, I know you've had some dealings with that and you try to kind of bring people back to reality. Discuss that a little bit because as wonderful as the, the diet lifestyle is, it doesn't necessarily mean everybody's going to have these, you know, unicorn experiences or, you know, have it as quickly as some other people do. And I love the success stories and they're real and they're fascinating and they're awesome. But talk a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. So this is kind of a passionate subject of mine because look at me, I'm, I'm pretty average looking, you know, um, when I, I was, I've always been thin. I was one of those people that were lucky slash unlucky in that I didn't have a weight problem. You know, everyone always thought I was too thin or, you know, I was really thin or everyone said, you know, oh, you look good and stuff like that. You know, um, so at my heaviest and people are going to laugh when I hear when they hear this um, at my heaviest, I was 150 pounds, Ooh, you know, huge. I can't right? talk to you now. I can't talk to you. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and then when I went carnivore, I dropped as low as like 131 pounds. And now I feel like I'm at a healthy weight of 144 pounds, but it's like 144 pounds of lean muscle, you know, and that, that all makes a difference. Um, and so the, the reason why I'm talking about that is <clears throat> us carnivores, we come in many different shapes and so sizes. That's why I like the meat mosaic. You know, that's why we do it with multiple different guests. Um, we all come from different economic backgrounds. You know, some stories I know are of, they were on food stamps, you know, mm. live in almost homeless and did carnivore and, or living with their parents, you know, on food stamps and did carnivore um, to, you know, executive at X, Y, or Z or CEO of this, or, you know, some, some, you know, where they're raking in, you know, buco bucks, you know, um, but also shapes and sizes, um, you know, one, one of the best comparisons are, are me and Tom Clark, like he's 5'11", you know, 3'10", pure muscle, pound, you know, hitting the, 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 the squat bar, you know, squatting over 560 pounds or something like that. And there's me, you know, coming in at, at 144 that, you know, <laughs> he looks like a person that watches a lot of anime, reads a lot of manga and doesn't get a lot of dates. And I'd be like, 
bingo, you're right. <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, I, I'm more likely to play, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh and magic with you than, hey, let's go, you know, pump some iron. Although I do love the gym. I do love to work out now and all that stuff. Um, but, you know, it, it's all, so the body goes in cycles, you know, healing cycles, resting cycles, building cycles. Um, and we, there's no test to know where you're at in any of those particular cycles, you know, and <laughs> life is still life, even after carnivore. Um, but the difference is, is A, over time, most likely, now there are no guarantees, and, you know, I, I hate to say it, and, and maybe I shouldn't say it, but I'll say it anyway, just because that's the kind of person I am. Um, there's certain things and certain people where it might be too late. You know, if you've mm -hmm. been on opiates for mm -hmm. a decade for a severe motorcycle accident, I don't know. You know, I, maybe, you know, may, maybe that'll get a certain level of better. Maybe you, you can stop taking, you know, some kind of prescription medication. Um, but at that point, I don't know. And I'm not going to tell you that that's, that's where you're headed. And for sure, just give it five years, 10 years. I don't know. I'm not going to give you that message, you know. Um, but hey, but you may not get, you know, um, amputation from type two diabetes while your back hurts and you're taking opioids. You know what I mean? Um, so it, it's twofold. It's one part. I, I believe that most of us, something will heal, you know, we'll get better in some kind of way. Um, will we get all the way better? A, what does that even mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> and B, um, is it cure or remission? You know what I mean? If we go right back to, you know, eating the carbs, the, the ice cream, the Oreos, um, the sweet potato fries, whatever your deal was, for me, the almonds and the uh, chicka pop popcorn, you know what I mean? Um, if we go back to that, it's gonna suck, not just when we start eating it again, but probably until we stop eating it again and go back to carnivore, right? And so, it's, it's the healing and then preventing. So it's like, okay, oh, I still have some back pain or maybe you still got some arthritis or, or maybe your IBS isn't as under control or maybe you're dealing with some diarrhea still and you've been on the diet for a year and a half. Whatever it is, okay, yes, I get it. And that sucks, but you have that, but also you don't have X, Y, or Z that maybe you are also dealing with and you're most likely not going to get, you know, diabetes, maybe your risk of cancer and heart disease has gone down, you know, these other preventative things as well. So it, it can be really easy. And Instagram life is what it is, right? It's Instagram. It's what is it? Three inches by four inches or something like that. Right. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's a flat screen, you know, yeah, the podcasts are more real, but you still don't see that person's day to day. Now, when I'm coaching, when I'm in these podcasts, I try to give people the real, hey, look, two weeks ago, I had a pretty bad migraine. I helped my cousin move. I probably, you know, there's, I was probably just leaking out so much sodium at the time. I, I ate some uh, Jersey Mike's, you know, they're just some straight lettuce with um, uh, roast beef, you know, which is, awkward for me, but you know, I, I did what I could. I was hungry and I was, you know, lifting and all that stuff. Uh, so those, those times are going to happen. All right. And, and when, when those times happen and if the next day you're in pain or you have a flare up or, or you have some kind of condition flare up, it's okay. That doesn't mean you failed. That doesn't even necessarily mean that you did something wrong. And, and one thing I work with my clients and other people on is this whole a B thing. Ah, oh, I went out and I had, you know, a steak at a restaurant and I forgot to tell them that it has to be the sacred holy cow, uh, grass fed, organic. <laughs> and, and I forgot my tallow at home and the butter in my purse completely melted and it got all over my phone. So I couldn't use that. So uh, it was probably cooked in seed oils. And now um, I came home and I couldn't sleep. And now my stomach hurts. And you know, we get these stories, right? And I'm just like, okay, wait, let's slow your roll. You know what I mean? Maybe like, yeah, maybe you're just that bad off with seed oils, or maybe there was some extra seasoning on that steak. First of all, how'd it taste? 
well, they actually cooked it right and it was medium rare, so it was pretty bomb. Awesome, sweet. Um, and, oh, and you know, my other friend didn't judge me as harshly for being carnivore. Awesome, let's roll with that. You know, that's very <laughs> cool. Um, okay, well, how was your sleep over the last two weeks? Ah, uh, well, you know, with the newborn, I'm not getting so much sleep and, you know, I kind of had an argument with my significant other and, ah, oh, that's right, on Thursday, I got a flat, you know what I mean? You start talking to people, it's like, oh, so it was quite the stressful week, you didn't sleep very well. Oh, and then you sneaked in, you know, a, a pickle and some kimchi because you read something, you know what I mean? And it's like, okay, this, you know, I would take all these other kind of reasons over the, you know, uh, steak with some seed oil and, and some seasoning on it the night before, you know what I mean? Maybe, I'm not gonna rule it out, but we're being so unscientific about it. And I'm always like telling my clients and maybe they get annoyed by this. I'm like, okay, I want you to write things down and bring me data. I need data to work with. I need your daily, I need your daily emotions. I need what you're ate daily. I need to know your bowel movements. Do you know what I mean? Like we get personal <laughs> as coaches, right? Cause it's all just so important and it all impact everything impacts everything. Mm -hmm. What was your thought? Were you having automatic negative thought patterns at the time? You know what I mean? All that stuff, it just relationships, you know, socializing or not socializing. How much time were they on the computer? You know, did they go outside that week? You know what I mean? And there's, there's so many different factors. And so I, I try to be as holistic as I can and, and real with people so that the number one thing is don't feel bad about yourself. Really don't. You've done that long enough, most likely, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're Here's what we know. Carnivore gives the body nutrition and it's the most low inflammatory food you can put in your body. That's what we know. And essentially that's all we actually know about it. Honestly, if you really break it down, um, that's the only for sure thing. And so it's like, you have food down. So now let's work on these other things, you know? Mm -hmm. um, because that's part of health and it's a huge part of health. Don't get me wrong, but it's not everything. Um, your stress doesn't magically disappear. Um, you don't, you know, your personality doesn't radically change and, you know, everyone's going to love you and all this stuff, especially those that have given up alcohol. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, that usually makes it, you know, a little, it's like, wait, I have to talk to people and tell them not only that I only eat meat, but I've also stopped drinking and, you know, I can't do the coffee, you know, how am I supposed to socialize, you know? Um, but uh, it, it, it will get better. And when you see these people on Instagram with, with the however many followers or whatever, um, they're, you know, it's a cross between the average and the, the <clears throat> almost miraculous healing, right? And um, we don't know yet. We don't have the ratios, right, of, of what of what can happen to somebody on carnivore. Just not enough people have done it and told their experience about it. Um, even with as many people and it's growing every day and understand that, but we still don't know what are the outliers of people that recover very, very quickly. You know, it's the same with keto. There's people that, you know, quit, quit the breads and grains and they, they get a, a, everything that they want and they can still eat almonds and have a salad and a tuna salad and stuff like that. And they're fine. There's people like me who's like, no, that would kill me. <laughs> that would be horrible. You know, I, the last time I had a broccoli was over a year and a half ago and it felt like it was shredding my stomach. <laughs> and I was like, okay, broccoli is out. It used to be my go-to, you know, um, but you know, no, not doing the broccoli. Then of course you learn about, you know, it interrupting iodine and the thyroid and all that stuff. So you're like, okay, definitely no broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, you're on your own health journey. And I think this is, this is the importance of coaching, right? Because the question is like, well, if it's just eat meat and drink water, why do you need a coach to help you? That's so dumb. And then three weeks later, they're like, hey, listen, I got this issue. I don't know what to do. Um, but <laughs> it, it's, it's to walk with you on this journey, you know, especially with someone that's gone through similar illnesses as you, you know, that's why I do with migraines, um, anxiety, depression, 
you know, I try to focus more, you know, I'm not going to walk through someone through the diabetic journey because I've never been diabetic. Um, I do help people with weight loss and the weight loss journey. I think it just comes with the territory though, but you know, I, I wouldn't, you know, I'd refer you out to somebody that if you're getting dissatisfied or, you know, I'm, I'm always free. Like there's no ego here when it comes to doing my coaching and helping people. I want people to get the help that they need and that they deserve. You know, I might be a step on that. I might be the final step. I might be the first step, the third step, the fifth step, but I'm, ha I'm grateful to be a part of that journey. Um, so, you know, if just what your primary concern is, match up with the coach that's gone through that journey that can walk with you hand in hand, that can go over the social, the emotional, the mental and the physical, you know? Um, and, and that way you can, cause they'll probably be more real with you too, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you know, they had their, it was their, their son's birthday. So they had that cupcake. What was that like? And they'll be like, oh, my energy, you know, I'm a little down today. Oh, what happened? Oh, I had that cupcake. Oh, so you, you have flaws. <laughs> oh, you actually have flaws. It's amazing. And when I do therapy with people and coaching, I have a philosophy of flaws first. I always tell them what I'm working on and what I'm struggling with in this moment before we even get to what they're struggling with. Because what is connection? Connection is vulnerability, right? Mm -hmm. And connection is the cure to addiction. It's really, really hard to keep social, emotional, mental relationships when you're mired in some kind of addiction. You know, it's nigh impossible, <laughs> if not impossible. Yeah. And so <clears throat> that's why the carnivore community is, is, is so awesome. And it, it, I've never really felt in, felt like I felt in, like in an in crowd or anything until the carnivore community. I'm like, these are my people, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh, they're my just people. as weird as me, yeah. <laughs> and, and the stories, cause like I said, going back to that feeling like you're the sickest person on the planet then I hear some of these stories. I'm like, okay, that beats me. How did they survive that? And they inspire me to keep, going, uh -huh. you yes. know, cause it's like, okay, if you had the willpower, then whatever stupid bull crap I'm dealing with in my personal life, or yeah, I had that <laughs> headache or I got some issue with my arm or whatever. You know what? I'm grateful for the amount of health that I have today because it's miles mm -hmm. from where I've come from. And I know there's people that a are still struggling today because they haven't found carnivore or don't want to try it yet or, or whatever they got going on. And the people that, I mean, there's some of the stories, just the things that people oh, yeah. have survived is yeah. just. It how? makes me, it just makes me go, you know what, sit back and shut up. Right. Because you don't have nothing to complain about, you know, comparatively. It, yeah. There's some pretty amazing stories out there. Right. And they're amazing people. I've, I've had the chance mm -hmm. to at least digitally meet some of them, you know, a yes. lot of them that I've wanted to, you know, and, and this is a message. And I did this on my Instagram live that I did a couple of weeks ago where I was like, okay, my story may not resonate with somebody. Amber, your story may not resonate with somebody, but the most important thing is you, you right there in the camera and you listening to this podcast, your story can inspire somebody. I guarantee it. Uh -huh. that's what's more important. Me and Amber, we're not important. It's you. <laughs> you're important. That's what this is about. It's about you. Absolutely. hundred percent, hundred percent. Let me see. Ooh. Okay. Well, Justin, it has been a blast yapping with you and getting to know you. And thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. I know I took up the whole time, but uh, I'm a talker. So what can I say? No, it's awesome. It's great. I'm <laughs> usually the one going blah, 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 blah. So it's all good. Hey, well, y'all are here. Subscribe to my channel and then go yes, follow Justin. I will put all his information below. He's an awesome person. Go check him out on MeetRx as a coach. If you're looking for somebody, want a little bit of guidance, it'd be awesome. Again, thanks, Again. Justin. Thanks for having me on. It's been awesome Mwah! to your audience, of course. Bye. Bye.